the judicial the judiciary has always been looking at how they are going to enhance their own working and systems, as was uh, uh, um, uh, released to the press as a response statement. Uh, the judiciary mentioned that they will continue to look at how they are going to administer their processes and in particular to ensure that the independence of the judiciary is well guarded, as well as ensuring the professional quality of the judgments is going to be maintained. So that's always been part of their uh, um, uh, uh, the aim and their motive, no doubt. Um, as to what exactly are the reforms that can be taken, it's very difficult to, to give a blanket example. But I can give one example that recently occurred, is that in the statutes law that has just, been, uh, one of the amendments that has just been passed, uh, you will recall that there were discussions about how three Court of Appeal judges can be, uh, 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 can, uh, sorry, how Court of Appeal can be dealt with um, by two judges when it relates to certain leave um, uh, to appeal um, on judicial review matters and other things. So uh, the changes from three judges in the Court of Appeal to two judge in the Court of Appeal and for matters to be dealt with in writing are part of a, you can call it a reform or you can call it an an enhancement of the system. So I think these are continuously being uh, reviewed and looked at, and I'm sure at the right moment uh, we will expect these to be again suggested by the judiciary and the Department of Justice will be very happy and indeed uh, 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 very um, our, our duty to ensure that they will be implemented. Um, the, uh, there are a number of things that relate to that decision that is worth noting. Um, you will recall in the very first paragraph of that decision, it reiterates what are the legal consequences if certain acts which amount to a breach of what they have agreed to comply with in the, in the oath took place. And effectively, that means that they will immediately lose their seat as a Legislative Council member. Now, insofar as that particular paragraph is concerned, it also identifies by way of um, uh, the d explanation what would amount to a, a violation of the legal requirements and conditions in order for one to uh, take part in an election as well as to serve as a legislative council member. So I think um, that's the very first paragraph. And that will be something that will have to be continued to be legislated in Hong Kong uh, through legislation. Uh, I'm sure the relevant bureau will take that into account and put that into uh, domestic laws in Hong Kong so that that very spirit as well as the, um, uh, the interpretation of Basic Law 104 can be implemented. Another matter that also relates to the swearing of the oath and therefore um, of the uh, public um, service providers, the civil servants and uh, etc., uh, uh, and the legislative members is of course also um, the uh, the uh, the um, Article Six of the. Uh, national security law. Um, and of course, in the discussion, there were also the national security law article 35 that only arise when somebody is convicted of the violation of national security crime. Um, insofar as Article 6 of the National Security Law is concerned, there is also a requirement for uh, people providing the public services, they also have to um, take certain oath, etc. And that also is something that is no doubt being looked at by the relevant department and, when, and, and bureau, and we will, as the Department of Justice, provide legislative work to ensure that those policies are implemented.